So, good evening. Tonight I wanted to uh, get a little bit into the details of the Arduino Uno and the motor shield I have gotten here, plus the new install interface of the DCCEX installer, which makes this easier. And I had taken a break between the 2000 2020, between 2020 when I first programmed this here with the Arduino IDE, which is this one down here, this thing. And I had the previous version um, on my other computer installed. This is now the newer version, revision of the Arduino e IDE. And I had downloaded the original DCC++. And then I winded up reprogramming this two weeks ago to the uh, with the DCCEX to upgrade this from DCC++ to DCCEX and that did not work too well because it is an Arduino Uno revision 3. Let me just change, we probably want to start here. Um, the Arduino Uno itself is a pretty simple device with a USB port, a power port, and then we have the motor shield on here. And I went with the 2M motor shield. And the reason why I did this was, as I had explained in my other video, where I'm talking about the, uh, you know, future of my layout, what I want to do when I finally buy a house or another house and have more room here. This is the man cave where I'm broadcasting from. And uh, the man cave here is not really suitable to do anything on a larger scale. So anything larger, say like then 15 feet by long or 16 feet long by six feet wide is not really feasible down here. And I wanted something bigger than this. So in this process of deciding on how big I wanted to get, I had to get started to get familiarized with DCC to begin with, since the last activity I did was basically back in the early 80s. And I had the uh, dream controller I'm documenting here in video format to rebuilding this, what I built back in the late 70s, early 80s as a plain DC system. And so this was my first introduction and the blue E10 engine I had converted was the first project of a conversion and familiarization with programming uh, CV parameters and that sort of stuff. Now, the next question arose is what I had explained on what my layout is going to look like in my other video. I will put a link in the description of this video here to that video where I'm explaining of what I would like to do. Um, I have to determine, I have to determine approximate length of the tracks altogether. And this Adreno shield here I got with this particular driver, which is a 289, I think that's a two, 289 RHN, is a two amp device if it is mounted on a heatsink. And it has a voltage drop of about two volts. So that means if you put 12 volts in here, the effective voltage measured on the tracks is about 10 volts. It's always two volts lower and the two volts basically are going to be dissipated in heat and without a heat sink you have to be really careful on how much current you're going to get through it and um, a device like this will work quite well if you have a small layout say like a 8 by 4 8 by 10 by 5 layout with like 50 to 75 feet of track combined and you don't want to run more than two or three locomotives engines at the same time without any lighting, uh, lighted cars in it, uh, because unless you have LED lighting, if you have uh, incandescent lighting, you will exceed the current. I will get to that here in a minute too, because that was another criteria of what I'm actually gonna go with. So this was basically the starting point uh, to familiarize myself with DCC and the ins and outs, programming track, running track, 
the switch overs and what software is available. Now what I did here is I like the EX installer a lot and I just wanted to show you this. On this particular Arduino Uno, I have revision three. I had to download the serial driver CH340, which comes from a Chinese website. That's why that is an unknown, unknown clone detected since it is the Chinese version of it. But we are selecting here the Arduino Uno and then we go to the product install and we're going to do the command station. And uh, this works sometimes and sometimes it hangs because of the uh, Wi-Fi connection I got. We will see here. But this is a pretty simple workaround on this. That takes a minute. Here we have it. So we could now install the version 5.0.9 production version or we go to a particular one. And the one I have actually installed on here is the version 4. Let me just see. We have to go down. Uh, let me see, where is the production version of this year? Four point. I think this is the one I have installed as this year. Version 4.1.6, which works with my Arduino Uno and the motor shield I have. And then we can configure this. It has a very limited configuration. And this motor shield I have is what they call the standard motor shield. And then basically when you push on compile and load, it will automatically upload the entire DCC software for you here. That's really all to it is the people at DCC EX have done an outstanding job developing this interface here, which is really nice because it was um, probably difficult for people who are not familiar with uh, programming microcontrollers um, to actually uh, go through the Arduino IDE software. I program and write software for microchip microcontrollers, so I'm used to this kind of environment where you have uh, software files and you start to compile them and you configure the microcontroller for the IOs and all of this stuff, and then you go you know, and program this, download it into the device, and the device starts then running. This is similar here. However, the Arduino IDE I have here does no longer work right because it is a revised version. It is 2.2 something. And uh, that one doesn't work too well with the 4.1 version of DCC, what we have there with the original files. Uh, the same thing is now I had to go back to the Decoder Pro and install the older version of it. And we will have that coming up. And these are right now is my experiences. So I experimented with all of the stuff, what works and what not, what not. And I actually did buy, while this is loading, I can show you this. I just bought a 12 volt DC power supply, 12 volt and 5 volt with two amps which was quite cheap and that works fine too. Here comes the Arduino Uno, uh, Arduino IDE. And you may have seen this. I don't want to go through the uh, particulars here, but I have to wait now until that actually loads up here. My computer is not that fast anymore. I need to get some more RAM in there. It is like the way we always said it. HP give it what HP give it uh, Microsoft shall take it and uh, that's basically what we got here I have four gigabytes in here of RAM and I probably need to upgrade to 8 or 16 or something like this to get the Windows 10 environment to work properly the interesting part with this is this really you don't do much, but there's one million processes going on and no one in it, even Microsoft can explain to you of what we do, what it does and what it doesn't do. Let me see. I don't have the power supply plugged in in the moment. I will do this here.
So now we can see this. Oops, I haven't turned it on. And we can see all four lights came on. So this works pretty well, uh, even though I paid only $14 for these two things. Yeah, the other thing is what I don't like too much about the shield system is here with the heat development, if you put the Wi-Fi board on top of it, uh, which may not even work with the Uno, you would have to go probably to the new one. It will <laughs> stuck the heat underneath here since the Wi-Fi has to be on top of it. And what I really like about JMI is the programming because it makes this really simple. Let me shut down the Arduino. This has loaded now. Let me just shut this down. So I would use the DCCEX installer. This will make this a lot easier. And we can see we have all our basic CD hole, all the CVs. And this is really the coolest thing is where we have the entire CV spreadsheet basically here where we can write or read every one of them, even the one which are not listed. And that makes it a lot easier. Plus you can do the full readout of the encoder. So this is why I'm definitely going to stay with JMRI because I think that this is one of the best programming tools uh, out there, even on the other ones, where we can go in there. The throttle I have to use with this earlier, let me just show you, let me close this off here, of which version I'm I running, 4.12 plus RB6A9BB1. This is the version which works with this Arduino Uno in this motor shield uh, from the throttle and programming and the speeds and everything else is correct in this. The throttle, let me just see here, is this here. So I go with 50% uh, or 100% and then the F3 function is the shunting which works with the ESU Lockpilot 4 quite well and the lights and everything else. I don't have it hooked up to the track. I show this, I will show this in another video. But this is basically a great system to do the programming on my little track I got here on the floor. And this is the reason why I put this on the floor is, um, I don't really like to crawl on the floor. I'm too old for doing that kind of stuff. But the old, locomotives with the die cast chassis like the Fleischmann's I got they have a higher center of gravity than the newer locomotives which have a die cast frame like this one here for the E103 and the weight in it their center of gravity is lower so they won't fall out of a curve at the higher speeds if you have them on the layout and you're like three feet or so up in that height a little bit over three feet then the danger is that if the loco goes too fast in a curve and that curve is on the edge of your layout then it may just fall onto the floor and this was the issue i had with the e 10 I had converted, which is this one here. This one here, you may remember these, this one out of the other. This one here had a broken carriage. They're usually die cast material and the unlucky person who ran that some time ago broke it and it had fractured. And I had to, the only replacement carriage I could get, which you can't really get anymore, is the, um, plastic version of this here. It fits in just the same way. You can hardly see it. This is the die cast, the right one and the left one is plastic. But this is what I had to do in order to fix this. 
and this comes because this is all cast iron these locomotives these engines are quite heavy i haven't put it on a scale yet and i probably will at some point and this is the so because of this higher center of gravity and the tendency of these locomotives to fall out of the track even on these large radiuses um, that's what made me put the entire track here on the floor on the carpet so in the case that the locomotive does fall out then we can see this here this is the track basically down here now it won't let me go back down in this is funny how this works well anyway so this is why i got it on the floor and if it falls out on either side it will wind up on the carpet and nothing gets scratched the paint is not going to get destroyed or we're not getting scratches in there no broken parts and that sort of stuff um until i can set the speed up correctly with the lock pilots to maximum speed according to the weight and the center of gravity of the engines that is something you want to uh, remember now on a large layout this thing here will not work because simply because of the current involved in this the average Fleischmann locomotive draws about 300 milliamps on the round motor and the big locomotives let me see and how i can get this into the picture here better for you because i have some more stuff here i don't want to put them on the track because the track is actually too small let's see let me turn this back off right off the main current hawks is this here see if we can go in this is the local VT 11 11.5 or 11.6 and this comes with a set of fully lighted cars each one of them has lights in it it looks magnificent all of it is incandescent so with these two with this set of six cars you're looking at one amp of engine dummy and the lighting and everything plus another 500 milliamps for lighting on this car at 15 volts because it is so one and a half amps if you have two of these for a total of 10 cars then you're looking at two amps and another one of these current hawks this is typical for Orco with their motors and the other one is this one let me see if i can get that in picture for you Yep. This one here, which is the Rover. And this one is fully lighted, front light, rear lights, everything is incandescent. And they suck up the current. So if I run one Roku train on a large layout, Say like with a thousand plus feet and you have 20 locos, locomotives with l lighted trains, I'm going to be a 10 to 20 amps of power. So I will have to find a system with repeaters or boosters and probably a combined current capability of 20 plus amps. Just said you have an idea. So this is why I set everything up the way I got it here for this to test this out of what the overall uh, system has to look like later on to properly design this out 
and to find the correct boosters, the base station and everything else. I would like to stay with JMI and uh, I don't know if I can use the DCC++ or DCC EX or if we have to go with another DCC base station or controller type command station for this. But I will do the programming on a track of this size separate with this because this is really a great environment for this with limited current and so far and so on. You can really get the locomotives easily programmed and then test it. If I get a switch, I will, can switch the track over and then I can get all of this converted. All of these trains here you see here will be converted to DCC at one point or another in the future, either with sound or without sound, depending on how much room we got for speaker and circuit board and wiring and complexity and all of this stuff. But this should give you an idea of why things look the way they look here. This is only a phase I'm going through where I am evaluating each train for conversion, current consumption, overall conditions, cleaning, maintenance, repairs, etc., etc., to get everything ready. And then I can do the final design and say, I'm going to have 10, 15, 20 locomotives running at the same time. All of my cars going to have lighting, at least the passenger cars. That means I, if I don't have LEDs, like in this case here, I will not convert them over to LEDs because this is waste to come with some of these things uh, to get this old stock uh, converted over to LED lighting. So these ones, they're going to be the current hogs in this. And then we will take it from there on. Let me see if there was anything else I wanted to mention in here. No, I think that was it. I hope this gave you an idea if you are planning a layout, if you're working on a layout and what to do. The, if just a second, yeah. if you just want to, or if you have a layout, say like you go with the suggested Fleischmann layout, like this is very similar in the size of what I had. This is probably about six and a half feet or so long and probably three feet, a little bit over three feet wide. Probably comes out to about 15 to 20 feet of track or a little bit more. Um, the Arduino Uno with that motor shield will do this layout with no problems. Everything, two, three locos at the same time, even if one of the trains is lighted, just to give you an idea. But this is about the maximum you would do. Or, like I said, it's just for programming purposes. And with that, you have a great night.